to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. An important milestone was reached for Time of Legends Joan of Arc in the last update, as we shared with you the very last revised booklet. Now, in case you didn't understand, the booklets and other items posted so far in the Kickstarter updates were not the final print-ready versions, but works-in-progress versions to gather your feedback and show you an overview of the revisions made to the scenarios. We are now in the process of entering the final corrections based on the feedback that you have sent us on the PDFs of those corrected booklets, but also on the comments made directly on social networks such as BGG or Discord. This is progressing very quickly, and once all the scenarios have been fully proofread and corrected, they'll be posted in their final version. Speaking of the feedback, it's with pleasure that we read on social networks all of your enthusiastic comments about the game, whether they were discussions, pictures of painted miniatures, scenario battle reports, whatever. Now concerning this, we went to Trick Trek last week where we shot an update video for Joan of Arc and played a game of the Plague scenario in its revised 1.5 version. This scenario pits unholy troops led by the Grim Reaper, played by Guillaume from Trip Track, who are trying to contaminate the city of Montpellier, protected by French troops, who were played by Leo, who will do anything to protect the city from the Black Death. This scenario is one of those that have been heavily modified between the version 1.0 and 1.5, as you'll see. So who will win? Leo or Guillaume? You can read the battle report written by Guillaume himself, a seasoned Joan of Arc player, which also describes his impressions of 1.5 changes that were made. And to include some other interesting feedback and tips, we've also included a link to a very well done video that describes a step-by-step -step use of Citadel contrast paints on Joan of Arc miniatures. Many of you have been asking the question, and the answer is clear. You can get a great result with very little time. And finally, we want to remind you that the Pledge Manager and Late Pledge of Time of Legends Joan of Arc 1.5 has been reopened on GameFound, and you can also find that link in the description below. Moving on to Solomon Kane, let's talk about how the production of Wave 1 and the preparation of Wave 2 are coming along. As we mentioned last week, we had a discussion with the factory so that they could bring us up to speed on the production status. We were informed that the production is coming along very nicely and advancing well. We also asked for a confirmation of the date of the shipping from the factory, and we were told that the latest that Wave 1 will be on the boat will be mid-October. Based on our calculations, this means that the first games will arrive in Oceania or Asia, within October, while we would expect the US, Europe, and rest of the world backers to start receiving their game from November through December. So we have solid reason to say that Wave 1 is going to reach backers before the end of the year. As we move closer to the end of the production of Wave 1, we'll be sharing with you more images from the factory and the process. Now let's talk a bit about Wave 2. Currently, our team has finalized three out of the five expansions. The last one is being laid out this week. These expansions are Against the Vampires, America the New World, and Castle of the Devil. These expansions are also currently in the translation stage for the French language. From next week, on, these will be sent to a local printer to get some prototypes with it ready, which will be sent out to our external playtesting teams, who will check if, they are, if there are any issues either in gameplay or just simple typographical errors. The other two expansions, Heart of Africa and Red Shadows, have also been fully developed by our external collaborators, Vesuvius Media. Our internal team is now playtesting those two expansions to ensure cohesion and style. After checking and playtesting them is finished, they will be passed along to the graphic designer who will lay them out as well. After that, 
it's back to more external play testing. So as you can see, Wave 2 is also moving along quite well, and we expect it to be ready to go to print within 2020. We'll, of course, keep you posted about that process. Moving on to Steam Watchers, we're in the process of revising the layout that's been done and tweaking the files we have up to and including making sure all the capital letters are there. It's a tedious process, granted, but it is very much needed. As Steam Watchers is a rather contained project, we figure it'll go relatively fast. We hope to move to translation for at least the core box very soon. That means we'll probably be able to share it with you as usual. And to top it off, we also want to add a few more visual examples in there as well. Now to our leader of the week. Mieville of the Free Fleet is a famed raider of the coasts. She's looking for the cores that will allow the Iron Fortresses to stir back to life, earning her ranks in the fleet from sheer ruthlessness and prowess. Her vicious tactics suit the customs and needs of her faction. She's ready to scour every patch of frozen waste and old world ruins, and, and yet the cores may be closer than she thinks. And finally, to hell the last saga. While our game designers develop and playtest the scenarios every day, the atmospheres and situations in which the players will be immersed appear to us progressively like scenes from a movie. What would these scenes be without a proper soundtrack? Our first wish was to assign a track to each song. But we soon realized, after studying the twists and turns and the variety of scenarios imagined by the authors, that 13 soundtracks played in a loop would not be enough to give life to the story we want to tell. So we worked closely with Lies Hamadou, our talented composer and sound designer, on a new approach and created a track list that would really serve the narrative. A real soundtrack, where each theme will carry an idea or a character and each break will accompany a major event. After much thought, we decided to double the duration of each of the tracks related to camp environments, outdoor and indoor exploration, evocations of intrigues, or mysteries. We want to let the universe settle without too much redundancy. We've added breakaway music, or sound pieces, which will be triggered by certain events via an icon system integrated into the paragraph booklet. And we even worked on themes to obtain game effects. For example, a player with an attentive ear can, in some cases, obtain a clue to distinguish reality from the false pretenses contained in Hell the Last Saga. The new track list now includes 20 songs instead of the 13 originally planned, and its duration has been considerably extended. <laughs> of course, we can't resist the temptation to allow you to listen to an excerpt from the working version of Kanaz, which will be regularly used for the scenarios taking place in the camp. course, you can find the link to the full excerpt in the description below. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.